23 of 31 days of Halloween. So as you guys can see for today's video I am in my zombie nurse costume. So if you guys have been with me for like quite a while, um, I wore this costume um, for Halloween in 2016, the first year that I did 31 days of Halloween which is so long ago and it's so crazy that I've had this costume for that long. Um, but yeah, I love it. It like brings back so many memories from the first year that I did 31 Days of Halloween um, and just like how much 31 Days of Halloween has changed since that first year. Like in that first year, I didn't even have a background. I didn't wear costumes. Um, it was just very simple and I also filmed like a lot of it on my phone as well um, that I had back then, my iPhone 6 and yeah it's just so crazy to think how much it's changed since then because um, now I have this background and I've got like a good camera set up now, I have a tripod finally. <laughs> um, so yeah it's just crazy to think how much 31 days of Halloween has changed uh, since I did it that first year. Um, so I love this costume because it just brings back so many memories from that first year. Um, so yeah, I just love it. And I DIY'd it myself as well, if you guys remember. I put um, all the fake blood all over it um, and then I cut it up at the bottom. Um, and yeah, I just love it. The only thing that is missing from this costume that I wore, like the first time I wore it, um, are some fake tattoos. So um, for, the, for this costume on Halloween, I wore um, fake tattoos that were like wounds. Um, and like cuts, so I wore them like on my arm and like on my neck and like on my face. Um, but I don't have any of them at the moment, so um, I probably should have gotten some at Overflow because I think I did see them there, um, but I just totally forgot, you know. So um, yeah, I don't have any of them uh, for this costume today, um, which is okay. Um, it still looks good, but it does look a bit better with um, the tattoo wounds on it. Tattoo? I said that weird. Tattoo wounds <laughs> um, uh, with this costume. So definitely makes it uh, look better but it still looks fine um, I really like my makeup just really crazy and um, yeah I like love this costume it brings back so many good memories from the first year that I wore it so I had to bring it back for this year of course um, so uh, now on to today's video so for today's video I am sharing with you guys five um, serial killers that you've never heard of so yesterday I did urban legends that you've never heard of and then today I'm doing serial killers that you've never heard of. So, um, for uh, this uh, list that I've found, um, there are 10 modern serial killers on this list, um, but I'm only doing 5 because 10 is a lot. So I'm just going to do the first 5. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, Alright, so the first one is the... Uh, Long Island serial killer. So it says in 2011, police in New York State were investigating the death of Shannon Gilbert, whose body was discovered near Gilgo Beach on Long Island. Uh, but while searching the area, they found a grave filled with the bodies of four women. Uh, a further search unearthed uh, six more bodies, including a child and a man dressed in women's clothing. The New York Times reported police linked some of the body parts found in the grave to unidentified victims whose bodies were found miles away, uh, stemming from unsolved crimes back, uh, dating back to 1996. According to the Associated Press, uh, most of the victims are believed to be sex workers who advertised on Craigslist, but only found, but only a few of them have been positively identified. Among the victims was Melissa Bartholomew, um, who had disappeared from her home in the Bronx in 2009. Her parents called the police, but authorities didn't take their concerns seriously until Bartholomew's little sister started getting phone calls from a mystery number with a man saying, I killed Melissa. Though, there, are, there have been some leads, uh, the killer is still at large. That is so creepy. Imagine getting those phone calls saying, with the man saying, I killed Melissa. That is just so creepy. Um, Alright, so that's the first one. 
The next one is Darren Dion Van. It looks very creepy. I mean, they all look creepy, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so the first one uh, says here. This is the second one, not the first one. Oh my god. Um, I had some Coke before I, uh, like Coca-Cola, before I started filming, so I'm a bit like really jittery at the moment because I just drank a whole bottle of Coca-Cola, so <laughs> that's why I'm kind of like all over the place at the moment, so sorry about that. Um, Alright, so it says here. Since Darren Dion Van was arrested in 2014 for the murder of a 19-year-old prostitute, he has confessed to killing at least six more women, but it wasn't the first time he'd been in trouble with the cops. Van had been convicted of ag aggravated rape in 2009 in Texas, and after hearing, uh, after serving, sorry, a total of five years, he returned to his home state of Indiana in July 2013, there he killed a 19-year-old uh, Africa Hardy, uh, strangling uh, her and leaving her body in the bathtub of a motel room. But he was caught on surveillance cameras and when pol police questioned him, he admit admitted to killing six more women. Soon he led investigators to bodies that he had left in abandoned buildings uh, around Gary, Indiana. Uh, in addition to murder charges, Van faces uh, counts of rape, attempted murder, and criminal uh, confinement, and is facing the death penalty for his crimes. Oh my god. That is so scary. I think all of these are in America, because this is on, this list is on the, yeah, it's American Psychos, it says. So it's all in America. Because this list is on uh, the Rolling Stones website. <clears throat> Alright, so the next one is in 2015. Oh, it's called, what is it called? Uh, William Devon Howell. Okay, that's his name. Um, in 2015, the remains of four people were found behind a Connecticut strip mall. It was the same. Uh, Desolate, desolate stretch of land where investigators had uh, discovered that three other bodies back in 2007. Investigators believe that the deaths were the work of one individual, William Devon Howell, uh, a drifter already in jail for the death of uh, Nilsa Arismendia, who was last seen uh, getting into a van in 2003. Her blood uh, was later discovered in Howell's 1985 Ford Echo, Echo Nolan, Echo Nolan uh, <laughs> that he allegedly called his murder mobile. Oh my god, that's so creepy. Um, <clears throat> it's there that he allegedly slept next uh, to the body of, a of at least one of his victims. Police were led to Howell after his uh, cellmate told them about his gut, about his garden um, where he buried his victims who all disappeared in 2009 when Hal was working odd jobs in the New Britain Connecticut area Hal pleaded guilty to the manslaughter of Aras Mendia in 2007 and is currently serving 15 years in prison uh, the trial for the six other murders may not happen until sometime in 2018 as the state continues to process the gruesome evidence. <gasps> so crazy. All right, so the next one is Salvatore Perone. Um, okay, <clears throat> no, it says, uh, a murder was on the loose in uh, Brooklyn killing shopkeepers of Middle Eastern uh, descent while they worked. Uh, police eventually found their man, Salvatore Perone, uh, a failing business owner whose wife and children had left him. Police say Perone stalked the streets of Brooklyn with a kill kit. Um, he carried around uh, in a black duffel bag that included screwdrivers, switchblades, uh, a bloody 8-inch serrated knife, three ladies' blouses, uh, latex glove, bleach, wire cutters and a loaded sword off rifle. Uh, when they searched his home they found a basement lair filled with ammo, a 12 gauge uh, shotgun and duct tape. 
Uh, it took uh, the jury less than 30 minutes to convict Perone, nicknamed uh, Son of Sal, of killing three Brooklyn shopkeepers. He was sentenced to the maximum sentence 70 year, 75 years to life in prison. Oh, so creepy. Alright, so the last one, because I'm starting to lose my voice, I don't know if you guys can tell, um, I don't know why, um, I think it's because I filmed a video before this and I talked a lot in that, so now I'm like losing my voice. Um, okay, <clears throat> it says here in, uh, oh his name is uh, Israel Keys. Um, in 2011, Israel Keys, a former soldier who was uh, honorably discharged from the US Army, turned off his cell phone, boarded a plane to Chicago, and then drove a rental car all the way to Vermont, uh, paying cash for all his expenses to avoid uh, leaving a trail. There he dug up a murder kit that he had buried in 2009 and supplies in hand. He picked a couple at random and brutally um, and meticul met meticulously uh, murdered them. In 2012, in Anchorage, Anchorage, uh, Alaska, I don't know how to say that town uh, name, uh, he murdered 18 year old Samantha Kowinnig, Kowinnig, uh and tormented her family with text, photographs, and debit card withdrawals, um, pretending she was still alive. Oh my god, that is messed up. Um, he was eventually caught in text. Uh, Texas and sent to Alaska for trial on charges of rape, kidnapping, and murder. He confessed to murdering four individuals in Washington state as well as one in New York and is suspected of more crimes. Keyes committed suicide in his jail cell before he could be convicted. My god, that is so, so creepy. Alright, so those are just some of the most creepiest serial killers that you've never heard of. Um, that is so insane. <laughs> like, it makes America sound like a crazy country, like, with crazy people in it, um, than it already is, <laughs> um, at the moment. Um, but yeah, that is just so, so creepy. Um, I'm sure there are plenty more, um, like, serial killers that you've never heard of, but that's just, like, that's just a few, um, that I found that I thought were super creepy. I mean, they're all creepy and terrifying. But those are just some that I just kind of like liked the sound of and wanted to share with you guys because I thought they were the most creepiest. So yeah. Um, but anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, again, sorry that I was kind of all over the place in this video. Like I said before, I just drank like a very large bottle of Coca-Cola before I started filming this video. So that made me like have a bit of a sugar high I think um, so yeah because I don't normally don't drink Coca-Cola I normally drink Pepsi Max um, which has like no sugar in it so yeah it's not normal for me to drink that much Coca-Cola so yeah I just like felt like having it today so I bought one um, so yeah sorry if I'm like all over the place in that video or in this video um, it's because of that so I probably shouldn't have done that before I started filming but Oh well. <laughs> um, but um, I hope that you guys did like today's video. Um, I hope you guys uh, liked my costume. Um, and let me know in the comments below um, which serial killer you thought was the creepiest. I mean, they're all really creepy and terrifying. Um, but I don't know. I think the creepiest one for me was the guy who like buried them in his garden. Like that is messed up. Like buried his victims in his garden. That's pretty messed up. I think that's the creepiest for me, for sure. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below um, who do you think is the creepiest serial killer on this list. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go now until I uh, completely lose my voice because I definitely feel like I'm going to be losing my voice by the end of uh, today. Um, but thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you all tomorrow for day 24 of 31 days of Halloween. Alright, bye guys.